In a substation, we always see some reactors connected with the capacitor bank. Now the question is, why are these reactors connected with the capacitor bank? So, for discussing the requirement of these reactors, first we need to know some basic behavior of the capacitor bank or basic behavior of a capacitor. Suppose this is a capacitor, meaning a capacitor bank, and this is a circuit breaker, and this portion is the rest of the power system. Now, when we switch on this circuit breaker, the voltage of the power system will appear across the capacitor. But the capacitor is initially uncharged, so the capacitor will take, say, Q charge from the system. That means the capacitor will take Q charge to get charged, and say C is the capacitance of the capacitor. From the basic formula, we know that Q equals C times V. Now, if we differentiate both sides of this equation, we will get dQ by dt equals C times dV by dt. Now, what is this dQ by dt? dQ by dt is nothing but current. So we can write current I equals C times dV by dt. What is this I? This I is nothing but the current flowing through the capacitor bank during switching on the capacitor bank. And this is called the charging current of the capacitor. Now, when the capacitor is fully uncharged, there will be no voltage at the capacitor. But whenever we are switching on the circuit breaker, the system voltage will appear at the terminal of the capacitor bank. And hence, the capacitor will acquire the system voltage by accumulating charge inside it. And this happens within a fraction of a second. Meaning the capacitor will get the full system voltage within a few milliseconds. That means the rate of rise of voltage across the capacitor bank is very high. That means DVDT is very high during switching on the capacitor bank. And due to this high DVDT, the current entering the capacitor bank from the system will also be very high initially. That means the charging current of the uncharged capacitor bank is very high. And because of this high current, there will be many problems in the system. And this high current is called the inrush current of the capacitor bank. Inrush current is nothing but the initial charging current of the capacitor bank when the capacitor is initially uncharged. So how do we limit this inrush current? Otherwise, inrush current will create problems in the system. Because of this huge current flowing through the system, the voltage of the system suddenly dips. And due to this voltage dip, the relay can actuate the undervoltage tripping in the circuit, which may disturb the power system stability. And another thing, due to this huge inrush current, the fuse of the capacitor elements inside the capacitor units of the capacitor bank may be blown out. Also, this huge current may be destructive for the capacitor bank itself and also for the other equipment connected in the power system. Now, what to do for limiting this inrush current? Otherwise, as I have said, this may create problems. How this may create problems I have already discussed. The main problem is that voltage dip. We know that an inductor always opposes the sudden change of current in the circuit. So if we put one inductor in series after the capacitor, the inrush current can be reduced. Now let me enter into a little bit more detail regarding the behavior of the inrush current and the circuit of the capacitor bank. Actually, a power system has its own inductance and capacitance. The transmission lines, transformers, induction motors, and lighting loads, fluorescent lamps, etc. connected to the circuit are inductive loads. These inductive loads give the inductance to the power system from the cables, etc. And the connected capacitors in the system, we get the capacitance of the network. The inherent inductance and capacitance of the system may create an LC circuit. And the natural frequency of this LC circuit during resonance will be nothing but where L is the inductance of the system and C is the capacitance of the system. Because of this resonance circuit created by inherent inductance and capacitance, better to say a series resonance circuit, the inrush current will oscillate with natural frequency as given by the formula. 1 over 2 pi square root of LC. And because of that, the initial charging current will oscillate with very high frequency. And that frequency, that natural frequency, may be somewhere between 2 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz even. So this current will have a frequency of 2 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. Now we know that the inductive reactance is nothing but X equals 2 pi FL, where F is the frequency of the current passing through the inductor and L is the inductance of the inductor. 
If we connect this inductor of very low value, even then, because of the high frequency, this inductor can offer a very high reactance to the circuit, which opposes the current flowing through the capacitor. In this way, we can limit the inrush current of the capacitor bank. This is how we use inductors to the capacitor bank to limit the inrush current during the switching on operation. Another thing is that adding this inductor to the circuit, it will shift the resonance frequency of the system. And that means the third harmonic, fifth harmonic, and seventh harmonic of the system frequency will be shifted so that the problem due to harmonics will be reduced due to this inductor connected in series with the capacitor bank. This is one of the advantages. Another advantage is the limited fault current. Whenever there is a fault in the power system anywhere, the capacitor will try to discharge through the fault path. In this case also, due to the inductor connected in series with the capacitor, it will limit the fault current, passing through the capacitor bank and save the capacitor bank. Again, suppose a fault occurs here, so current will try to come from the system as well as the fully charged capacitor. As the capacitor is in a charged condition during the fault, the capacitor will try to discharge very rapidly due to this low impedance fault path. But due to the presence of this reactor in the circuit, the discharging current during the fault will be limited, which will save the capacitor bank. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and tap the notification bell so you never miss a voltage boost from our channel. Got questions or want us to cover a specific topic? Drop it in the comments. We read everyone. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay grounded, stay curious, and keep engineering your future. See you in the next one.